In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the aspects of playing the clarinet that has a massive impact on the quality of your embouchure. This is one of those weird things that I've definitely talked about on a weekly warm-up in the past and it comes up and some teachers are really picky about it and some teachers almost say nothing about it at all, but the actual effect that it can have on your sound can be massive. But before we get into it, at the time of filming this video, this channel has just recently passed 1,000 subscribers. It's so amazing, I cannot tell you how excited I am, how happy I am to pass this really big milestone. I'm just so excited to just continue making this content for all of you. And if you find this helpful, then be sure to subscribe because I make a new video like this every single week, comes out every Saturday. And then every Monday, I also go live going over a warm-up exercise challenging you to implement it. So if you play the clarinet and you want some great clarinet content to continue improving your music, then definitely subscribe to this channel, like the video so this comes up in your YouTube newsfeed more often. And if you want more of my content, then go to quickstartclarinet.com. All right, before I just tell you what this thing that I'm talking about in this video is, let me do a demonstration for you. So I'm going to play a high G on the clarinet. I'll sort of turn to the side so you can see what I'm talking about. And I want you to listen to what happens to the sound quality. So you can hear, as I changed the angle of the clarinet, the sound quality changed really, really dramatically. On those higher notes in particular, it's a little bit more sensitive, and this reed in particular is actually very, very soft, so it is even more dramatic about it. But oftentimes, beginners will be playing on a little bit softer reed setup, and then they get into these high notes and things just stop working completely, or the sound just gets really bad, and they don't know why. And even if their embouchure looks good visually, just the embouchure on its own, this angle of the clarinet can make a big difference. And of course, that's what I wanna to talk to you about is why that angle is so important and an exercise to help you make sure that you're at the best angle to get the best read of vibrations and the best quality of sound. So whenever thinking about any aspect of the clarinet playing, whether it's the air, the embouchure, the tongue position, the reed strength, even the mouthpiece, all of those things, the most important thing to remember is that at the end of the day, your sound quality is determined by how well your reed vibrates against the mouthpiece. And pretty much how every single mouthpiece works and every single reed works is that the mouthpiece has a little bit of curve to it, the reed sits on it flat, so there's that little bit of opening at the tip, and then it vibrates back and forth when you blow air through it, and that's what actually creates your sound. So it's really important that those vibrations are happening in the best way possible to create the most resonant sound. Now what happens when you have your reed and mouthpiece together, and then you put the embouchure on it, depending on the angle of it, drastically changes the kind of pressure that you're putting on the reed. So when you have the embouchure and the clarinet sort of straight in your mouth, sticking sort of parallel to the ground like this, then what happens is your embouchure is directly across from the reed and directly putting pressure on the reed. This means that you're gonna have a couple different potential problems. One could be that you get no sound at all, and that happens because it's very easy to just completely close off that reed when you have the embouchure pressure going perfectly perpendicular to the reed. All of your embouchure pressure is directly translating to whether the reed is open and can vibrate or is closed and can't vibrate. The second issue you'll have is probably a very shaky, really unclear sound, maybe something like this. you can hear how there's no stability to the sound at all because what's happening with this embouchure is you're sort of alternating between too much pressure, too little pressure, sort of going in between and every single little change in your embouchure and bottom lip pressure directly translate into a change in the pressure on the reed because again, you're sort of perpendicular so it's a really one-to-one -one force with your biting strength and you're actually closing the reed off on the mouthpiece. 
And then the sort of most likely problem if you are able to get a sound like this is that you get that sort of nasally sort of kazooie sound like this. And at the end there, I even didn't have enough pressure to create the sound. And that's where you get into trouble because in order to actually really get a consistent sound with the embouchure perfectly perpendicular to the reed, what you have to do is be really, really open and relaxed with your embouchure. But then what happens is the reed sort of gets vibrating out of control and that's when you get that more kazooie sound. Now let's talk about what happens at the other extreme. So that was the clarinet straight in your mouth. Now let's talk about when the clarinet's really, really close to your body and at a very almost parallel to the opening of your mouth, uh, sort of embouchure clarinet angle. What happens here, again, think about that natural biting force of your jaw. When it closes, what's going to happen is your pressure is going to go pretty much parallel to the reed and go straight to the tip of the reed. So almost always the issue that happens here is no sound or a very thin sound like this. Squeaks are also very common at this clarinet angle because you're so close to the tip of the reed and where the reed needs to be vibrating and it's so easy to pinch off those vibrations or just be a little too tight and cause squeaking. So what we want is the ideal sort of 45 degrees to your embouchure and what that allows is that when you do your natural biting force you're digging into sort of the true heart of the reed, you aren't perfectly perpendicular where you're just closing things off. You're not going up towards the tip of the reed where, again, you're closing things off. You're going at this angle that works really well with the reed where you can control the vibrations of the reed, but you're not putting too much pressure in pinching off the vibrations of the reed. Now a quick caveat to all of this is that it doesn't actually have to be the angle of your clarinet that's the problem. What this is, it's, it doesn't have to do with where the clarinet is per se, it has much more to do with the angle of the clarinet inside of your embouchure. So it's entirely possible to have the clarinet at this sort of nice 45 degrees to your body that we want, but then if you put your head down, then you end up with that straight on the mouthpiece more perpendicular clarinet to your embouchure, like this. And again, you get that nice kazooie sound. Same thing goes the other way. You could have the clarinet all the way parallel to the ground, but if you tip your head back a ton, then you get that extremely pinched off sound because again, the clarinet mouthpiece in your embouchure has that pinched off two vertical uh, angle. So the angle has almost nothing to do with the clarinet to your body. You can see lots of videos of especially jazz musicians truly playing way out here. But if you notice their head isn't straight and the clarinet's out like this, their head is often up as well. And that's what's truly important is how the embouchure is and the angle of the clarinet. Ideally, you can just keep your head relaxed keep good posture, look straight at wet head. I like to think of my chin sort of being parallel to the ground, and then the clarinet is 45 degrees. And that's nice, because 45 degrees when the head is parallel means that the clarinet mouthpiece is going 45 degrees into your mouth. All right, let me give you a little exercise to actually work on this and find the perfect angle for yourself. Because depending on your bite, depending on how your embouchure is set up, the angle might actually vary just slightly. So the best way to do it is to experiment like everything. Just find what sounds the best and then go for it. So what I recommend is setting up your good embouchure and then just keep your head parallel to the ground. And then what you should try is to change the angle while you're holding one note. If you're really comfortable with playing like a high G just right on top of the staff, that's a great note to experiment with this. And what you do, set up straight, put the clarinet in wherever you normally put it, and then go to the extremes and see what happens.
And as you do that, make sure that you aren't moving your head. It's very easy to do this. And think, oh, the sound didn't really change at all as I did that. But that's because the angle of the, the mouthpiece in your mouth didn't change at all. So what you need to do is keep your head steady, move just the clarinet, and from there you should hear a very wide range in the quality of sound, all the way from kind of kazooey, really spread sound to really, really thin, tight sound. And you can sort of adjust and find that sweet spot in the middle that gives you the very best sound. Then from there, it's just a matter of getting used to that and playing all of your notes with that proper clarinet angle. If you're ever playing through something and you think, oh, I don't know if this is really the best sound quality, just pause for a second, pick one of the notes in something you're playing, do that quick little exercise to adjust, see what sounds good, and then just keep on going from there once you've found that sweet spot again. All right, I hope that this has been helpful. I hope you take a second to think about the angle of your clarinet. And if you aren't, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna do like I did a couple weeks ago if you've been following the channel for a while. I did sort of a two-parter with some different tuning tendency things. I think I'm gonna do another video next week all about that really good embouchure and another sort of secret or sometimes overlooked detail of the embouchure that has a massive impact on the sound quality just like the angle of the clarinet does here. So if you want to check that out, be sure to subscribe. It'll be coming out next Saturday. That'll be my next video. Thank you so much for watching this one, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.